Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager series. This is episode number 62. And today we're returning with the penultimate episode of Season 7 where our Champions League hopes are alive on life support. And normally I'll show you, before we get to the games, I'll show you what's been going on off camera, but there's been nothing to report because you saw the last three on camera. The 3-1 victory against Valencia, where I thought we got one foot in the Europa League final. The 1-1 draw against West Brom, and of course the ultimate collapse away at the Mestalla. Uh, two Premier League games to go, you're going to see them both today. Leicester away at King Power and Man City at home. The boys have got nothing to play for, so hopefully... As we still have a slim chance of qualifying the Champions League, we'll bounce back after no wins in our last five Premier League games. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen somehow. But as you can see, uh, we are the Sunday kickoff today. Uh, Crystal Palace, by the way, lost yesterday uh, home to Bournemouth. Alfredo Morelos scoring two late goals there. So Palace now, they can't make fourth. Chelsea are playing on Monday night and they're at home to West Ham. You fully expect to win that game. So if they do win that game, that's all they need. One win from two. They're three points ahead of us right now and they've got a much better goal from Jekyll two. All Chelsea need is one win in their final two games and fourth place is theirs. However, we will try and push them as far as we can. It's Leicester away in the penultimate game of the Premier League season, and this will be our team. Going back to our Tiki Taka after the loss using the Gigan Press on Thursday night, and this is our lineup. Zangrani and goal, a back for Osana Bria, Basia, Godfrey, and Aaron's on 86% conditioning. Uh, Provenzano, O'Connor, and Longstaff through the middle, with Bamba, Sporting Ida, and Brewster up top, and on the bench, Freenez, Pavlovich, Madu, Mount Madison, Jokic, and Firmino as well. I could not sound more defeatist. <laughs> Come on, you Canaries feel absolutely broken after that loss on Thursday. 4-1. I mean, I rested all of my players in the game against West Brom. I said, lads, have the weekend to yourselves. Go, go, go do whatever you want to do. I don't, I don't mind. Go do whatever you want to do this weekend. It's yours. I'm going to feel the back upside and you can all play on Thursday night. You'll all be fresh and motivated for the game. And we lose 4-1 after being up in the first leg 3-1. Embarrassing. I'm not going to get over this for a long time. It's like when Vasilla scored that own goal against Chelsea. Oh my god, please be offside. I can't take another goal getting conceded from a set piece. Yeah, João Pedro's offside. <laughs> set pieces in Football Manager. Literally a cheat code. Bamba, towards the end of the season, really has been poor, hasn't he? He, uh, he had such an amazing run. But he's, he's just not picked it up when we needed him the most. But do you know what? There's 11 minutes to go and we've got a highlight. Nope, scratched out. We've given the ball away. It was less to get it back and they will build from inside their own half. But as Longstaff intercepts on Kante, chance for a break. Matty, don't go for goal. Don't go for goal. Bamba shot blocked. Ida, straight at the goalkeeper. De Vrij, shut down by Ida, oh please, come on, it's two on one, it's two on one, pop, pass the ball, okay, don't pass the ball, I thought he hit it over, I was going to say, pass the ball, Brewster's right there, but Ida makes it 1-0, 12th of the season, I thought for sure that went over, De Vrij dilly-dallying, we see that quite often in this year's FM, Ida robs him, runs through, he had Brewster right next to him, I was thinking, just, just offload the ball, but instead, yeah, it just, just nestles into the back of the net as it goes underneath the crossbar, and into the goal. 1-0, Norwich in front. A result, you know, will take us to the final day at least. It won't be enough, but at least we'll keep the pressure on. That will be my crowning achievement in Football Manager. Keeping the pressure on. <laughs> As the cross comes in, Godfrey heads clear and Bamba nods on. There's a chance for a second goal here right after the break as well. Adam is blitzing forward. And he should have made it too, but Brewster will for him. Rian turns in the rebound. I think he's going to win the Golden Boot this year. It's not what we want, but at least we're keeping it going until the final day. Again, all Chelsea need is one win from their final two games, and they will finish in fourth. So whether we win back-to-back, -back, it's not really that important because I just can't see us overtaking the Blues now. But I, I would like to at least take it to match day 38 as we've surrendered a penalty through Captain Ben Godfrey. And I tell you what, if we collapse like we did away in Spain here against Leicester, I think I will shoot myself. Young Min Son scores. Bad enough he always scores against me in FIFA career mode. Now he's doing it in Football Manager. But anyway, 2-1. We're still in front. Still in front. Half an hour to go. And as things stand, we'll take it to the final day. Poor Max Ahrens is absolutely shattered out there. He wants to come off. But really, he's the best right back we've got by a country mile. 
as Leicester almost scored from a bloody cross. But 10 minutes to go, almost there. Bamba coming off for Madison, just to burn some clock really in the final few stages. And this result will take it to the final day. Oh God, no. You are absolutely joking. Not a cross. Not a cross. Not a cross. Oh, off the top of the crossbar. Bloody hell. Well, you know, we'll take it to the final day. We'll, uh, we'll take it to the final day. Brewster can make it free and wrap the points up, which he should have done, but it's straight to the goalkeeper. Two on the final score. First win in the Premier League after none in five. I mean, Leicester had nothing to play for, so not, not too surprised, but... Nice bounce back, I suppose, after Thursday night, but it's like JoJo. It's a little too late. Adam Ida coming up big today, scoring that wonderful guy up for the break and then causing our second, if you will. I would say to the boys, a good boy, a good win. Well done. I mean, counts for nothing really now, but still. And yeah, that means in the Premier League table, uh, Chelsea have been caught up on goal difference. Because the goal difference swing is just so big there, there's absolutely no way we could overtake them. Even if they lose one of their final two games... Uh, again, unless they lose by like seven goals, which just isn't going to happen, it's um, it's their fourth place and we ain't catching up. The only way we can do it is if Chelsea slip up in both games. And again, that just isn't going to happen. They have to draw or lose at home to West Ham, who have got nothing to play for, at Stamford Bridge. And also lose on the final day. And we've got to beat Man City on the final day as well. So we'll process through the game. Chelsea have won by three goals to nil. So yeah, it's it's over. I mean, you, you can't say that we've underperformed by the board expectations. You know, we, we've qualified for the Europa League five years ahead of schedule. You know, that's that's impressive. No matter how you look at it and how you downplay things, that is still very impressive, you know. So I... I, you know, we're not going to finish any lower than fifth now. We're guaranteed fifth place. It's not, it, it's not as bad as it might appear to some. You know, I am, I am not a good football manager player. Um, <laughs> true words were never spoken. You know, and that's obvious. I, uh, I don't try and deny it. I, I'm not delirious. You know, I'm not very good at the game. But as, as I always say, you know, like, football manager is, is a difficult game. This is the most difficult FM I've ever played. And as I often say as well, breaking the top six up in football manager is a very difficult thing to do when you're not using one of the traditional top six from the beginning. So, you know, to, to be in fifth, to have back-to-back -back seasons of doing that, breaking the top six up, qualifying for the Europa League, and again, doing it way ahead of schedule, way ahead of schedule, Reaching the semis of the Europa League, reaching the FA Cup final, reaching the Carabao Cup quarter final, no matter how you look at it, it's still been a decent season. And look at that profit as well. Look at that profit there. 53.83 million pounds, topping the table in the profit. That's, I mean, that's, that's something. I mean, just, just look at that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Just thinking about like um, all the amazing football manager YouTubers that are out there that are so good at the game. And they're like, oh yeah, I remember uh, probably my best season of football manager was, you know, I won the treble. I mean, that was just unbelievable, you know, going all the way, Premier League, FA Cup and the Champions League. Yeah, that's pretty good. But, you know, I'll never forget the year where I won the Premier League undefeated. I mean, that was just a heck of an achievement. 38 games, 32 wins and six draws. Hey, Docs, what, what was your best achievement? Um... Probably the year we topped the profit table in the Premier League, yeah, that was, that was pretty impressive. Well, I must say I'm not entirely sure what we're going to be seeing next year uh, at Carrow Road in terms of our squad. I'm definitely thinking that a couple of these players will be gone. I think I think Basia will probably be gone. He's got interest from Arsenal and Real Madrid. I've got no interest in selling him to Arsenal. But if Madrid put a bid in of around 45 to 50 mil, I'd say that would be an undersell, really, considering his stats. But I'll take it because Pavlovic has come in. And honestly, I know that Basia is rated high. I know he's not. Um, but anyway, yeah, Pavlovic, I think he's an absolute fucking tank, man. This guy's had an amazing debut year for us all across the board. I think Basia will probably be gone. I think Farina, as sad as it will be to say, I think he'll probably be gone. I can't see him accepting a backup goalkeeper role here. Uh, so I think he'll probably be gone. And I wouldn't be surprised if Karamoko moves on as well. Just because, again, he's not really progressed much in the past couple of years. We don't use wingers now. And whilst he's been amazing in the Europa League this year, it's just... 
I don't know, he's only got a year left in his contract. I wouldn't be surprised if he's gone as well. Just hasn't really progressed much in the past two or three years. And again, due to the tactical change, we don't, uh, we don't really need him now. But there'll definitely be some change. The question is just how much. And do we make a major sale like last year with Vasilic? I'm not too sure. Al Saad have paid Norwich 925000 as part of the Kaladu Koulibaly transfer deal. The player has played 50 league games for Al Saad. Oh yeah. Just, just add it to the pile, lads. Add it to the pile. Yep. Oh yeah. I am so good at making profit in Football Manager. Oh yeah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, second and final game today, and it is indeed the final game of the Premier League season. Once again, um, no chance you make fourth place now. Uh, Chelsea away at the Emirates Stadium. I still think we'll get a point in that game as well, to be honest, even though the Gunners are going for their third straight title. Uh, they're one point clear of the Red Devils, and a win will guarantee they get the free peat. Again, we, we could only overtake Chelsea with a big win today. And Chelsea losing by a few goals as well. The bottom three have already been decided as well. Sheffield United are staying up as we expected. And Barnsley have avoided the unwanted record as well. So there's, there's nothing to play for at all. You know, top four has basically been decided. It's just who wins the title today. And I think it probably could be Arsenal. But who have Man United got? Other away at Bournemouth today. Who have been in pretty decent form lately. But anyway, uh, this is the team for the game then. Our final game of the season for the FA Cup final on Saturday afternoon. And I might... Yeah, actually, no, let's not do it. I was going to say, I might possibly rotate some players, but you just know what's going to happen. Chelsea are going to go 5-0 down in 20 minutes, and I'll pick a backup side with Curtis Jones playing deep-line playmaker. But yeah, this will be our team. Uh, Zangrandi in goal. Back four of Sanabria, Pavlovich, Goffrey and Hours of Provenzano, O'Connor and Mount for the middle. Bam, Sports, Ida and Brewster up top. And on the bench, Farinas, Basia, Madu, Longstaff, Madison, Jokic and Firmino as well. Final game of the season. Nothing to play for, really, but let's just at least end strong with back-to-back -back wins. Come on, you Canaries. I think, tactically speaking as well, I will probably look to get a new system for next season. Because, you know, the, the, the Gigan Press and the Tiki Taka throughout this year have actually been really, really good. But, uh, you know, one, one thing we've noticed throughout the save is that stagnation has really hampered us at times. You know, we've been so reliant on one particular tactical system, in particular the 4 2 3 1 that I persisted with for about five years. Um, you know, and stagnation really has hampered us a little bit. So I, I do believe as Pavlovich heads in the Bamba free kick and right on cue, like I was saying, this guy's a bloody tank. I, I do think a new tactical system is probably in order for next year. What we go with, I'm not entirely sure, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, two of our best players combining for the first goal of the game. And, you know, I said this very recently. I think if Bamba didn't come in this year, Pavlovich would have been our signing of the season and it wouldn't have even been close. He's had an amazing debut year. He's just been overshadowed by, by, overshadowed by Bamba's brilliance. Anyway, leading by a goal, halfway through the first half. Counts for nothing, really, but still, nice to see him. I'm never going to forgive myself for resting my entire side against West Brom and drawing 1-1. You know, because I just thought it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. We'll get a result on Thursday night. We'll make it through to the Europa League final. I mean, we're leading by three goals to one, for goodness sake. Surely we're going through as Brewster should have made it two there, but does now at the second time of asking. And fucking hell, we lose 4-1 in, in that game. They didn't deserve a rest against West Brom. I shouldn't have done it. It was my error. We've had a lot of bad luck in this series. I'll be the first to admit it. But I can always hold my hands up and accept when I made a glaring error. And that was a glaring error. I thought for sure, rotating the side, giving them the rest... And having them fully fit for the Thursday night game was the right thing to do. But it wasn't. And it was my error. Bruce is going to win the golden boot. And he's just picked up a knock as well. I might have to take him off because we've got the game against F uh, Liverpool in the FA Cup final. And uh, of course I want to start him for that one. As we still lead by two goals to nil. Arsenal and Chelsea still tied I believe. And I'll tell you what. You know this reminds me a lot of when Liverpool were going for the title a few years ago. Against Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park. As Ida hits the woodwork. And, uh, and puts it off tight. In fact, I think it just went straight wide. But either way, it was when Liverpool were going for the title and it was the goal difference they were chasing against Crystal Palace. And they were really going at Crystal Palace. Uh, I think the game finished 3-3 in the end. But either way, you know, right now, with Bournemouth beating Manchester United, <laughs> I mean, seriously, Manchester United are, are blowing it. I'm going to passionately say to the boys, it's a great opportunity to show the pundits have been right to back you up. We are still leading by two. And the full league table doesn't give you the goal difference swing. I think it needs to be six or seven goals. So Arsenal need to score like three goals. We need like another four. I don't think that's going to happen. But either way, it's crazy to think right now Arsenal are slipping up. But Man United are losing. It's a series of slip-ups really, isn't it? As uh, Man City get a goal back there. And any chance of us whatsoever of overtaking Chelsea on goal difference on the final day 
is all but gone now. Lovely volley, but we don't need to replay for it. 2-1, and uh, if I tell you what, if we choke away this on the final day, that'll be damning. Can't believe it's still 0-0 at the Emirates, as Ida heads over. And Manchester United are still behind on the south coast at Bournemouth. Oh, now Arsenal in front, leading by a goal. But again, the goal difference swing is, is, is so severe. We need like five goals. Manchester United have found a leveller against Bournemouth, but now that Arsenal are winning, that'll count for nothing if they find a winning goal there. But as for us, as Bamba plays it back to Provenzano, yeah, we need, we need like six or seven goals in 22 minutes. That's just not going to happen against Man City. So yeah, I mean, we, we knew we knew fourth place had gone. We, we knew it. Never forgive myself for resting those players against West Brom. Never, ever, ever going to forgive myself. Because this result, bloody hell, Zangrandi, how'd you get beaten from there? This result, well, actually now this result wouldn't give us fourth place. It's 2-2. Two -two. The, 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 the flag's up for offside, so it won't count. I guess Zangrandi probably knew that, or at least he'll say he did. But, um, yeah, this result would have given us fourth place had we not drawn against West Brom. Never forgive myself. Oh, and Santa Bria's just got an injury. Potential lower leg. Very ambiguous. And that's probably going to put him out for the FA Cup final as well. Gutting. Alex Tellez isn't going to be match, match fit for the game either as Arsenal go 2 0 up on Chelsea. But again, goal difference is just so big, doesn't really matter. But either way, I'm never ever going to forgive myself. Also, though, how didn't we beat West Brom with that team? I mean, it was a weakened team, don't get me wrong, but West Brom were basically already relegated at that point. We were at home. How did we not win? As Madhu could have made it 3 1. But sadly, can't be the goalkeeper. But that will do it then. 2-1 the final score. We do win back-to-back -to, -back to close out the Premier League season with wins, wins in succession. That's quite nice considering how we were tanking it towards the end of the campaign. But sadly, it, it comes in vain. Fair play to Barnsley, by the way. Another game where they don't have a loss. So they end up with 17 points in the end in the Premier League season. Arsenal do beat Chelsea by two goals to nil though, so they are crowned champions and they have won the three-peat as Manchester United could only manage a draw away against Bournemouth. And Chelsea do pip us to the Champions League on goal difference. Eight goals proved to be the difference between us and Champions League football. Santa Bria, please don't be injured for the FA Cup final. Oh, mate. Broken lower leg. I tell you, man, I know I've made some serious fuck-ups in this save, but Bruce is going to be fine. But we have had some real misfortune as well. At least the money's still rolling in. The board are delighted the team qualified for the Europa League through their participation in the Premier League this season. However, we at one stage look like qualifying for the Champions League, so we shouldn't get too carried away. Lads, it already hurts enough as it is. Don't put a fucking knife in. There is no interest in Herman Bamba. After the end of our Premier League season, I'm going to really hope it stays that way because he is elite. He is our best player by far. Six goals and eight assists in 31 Premier League games for us this season. I'm not in his favour personnel. Norwich aren't in the favour clubs yet. So he's got no attachment to Carrow Road at all. And I said if we don't qualify for the Champions League, I think he'll be gone. I think he probably will be, but... Uh... I'm going to hope that won't be the case. I'm going to hope I can convince him to stay here. But as for the FA Cup final, that will be coming in the final episode of the season. If we don't win that, then I think we definitely will see Basia and Provence. Oh my God. We will see Basia and Provenzano leave. Because I promised them that we will win silverware this season. If we don't do that, then... Oh, sorry, it's not um, Provenzano, it's Grandi. If we don't do that, then I think those two will probably be gone. And that will end today's episode of the Football Manager series, guys. So a big thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it as Brewster claims his first ever golden boot. And if you have enjoyed today's episode, then please do drop a like. Uh, much love to you all. It's Bamba Wins Players Young Player of the Year. Have a fantastic day. And I will see you for the season finale. My goodness, Arsenal and Liverpool dominating. But we have Brewster in there. Uh, have a fantastic day. Uh, much love. And I'll see you for the season finale, which is going to be, of course... The FA Cup final, our first to save against Liverpool, where I think if we don't win it, we'll be seeing some major changes in the summer and we'll probably for sure be losing Zangrandi and Basir as well. Have a great day, guys. Much love. And I'll see you for the final episode of Season 7 very soon.